Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Energy News Beat Daily Stand Up. My name's Stu Turley, President and CEO of the Sandstone Group. Michael's got the night off, but I'll tell you what, it is busy around here. Let's start up with our stories today. UAE raises capacity at offshore oil field as it aims for 5 million barrels per day by 2027. Second story out of the blocks. Why City thinks Trump is bearish for oil. Russia's crude oil shipments plunge 11 month low. Wow. Why don't they turn up the wind turbines up from the energy bad boys? I love the Isaac Orr and the gang over there. Great job. Camilla's much touted 5 billion electric school bus program yielded 60 buses in three years. Wow. What's a few billion between friends? And then Kamala Harris is more radical than her energy policies than Joe Biden from a friend of the show. We absolutely love Ronald Stein. He has a great article there. And let's get rolling with our first story here. UAE raises capacity of offshore oil as it aims for 5 million barrels per day by 2027. ADNOC or ADNOC offshore Satal al Razbat field has been seen a 25% jump in production capacity to 140,000 barrels per day through the implementation of advanced digital technologies. The state company, the UAE, once OPEC's largest producer, said, This is pretty exciting. This has enabled the accelerated growth in the field of capacity with reduced cost and emissions. The field's digitalization will enable the deployment of additional AI solutions to further enhance and optimize operations, said Ad Adnock, which has been betting on digital and AI-enabled operations to boost operations management and cut emissions and costs. It's pretty cool. Hats off to them. Quote, unquote, we will responsibly grow our oil production capacity to 5 million barrels per day by 2027 from our low carbon re reservoirs, drive estimated EOR solutions, and explore new resources to meet the growing energy needs of our customers while keeping emissions to the minimum. Absolutely hats off to them in the UAE. Hey, let's roll over to why City thinks Trump is bearish for oil. This is kind of funny. U.S. oil and gas industry thrived under Biden, even while being hit in the back of the head with a shovel, with all major oil companies doubling profits and the energy shares up 117%. Harris likely to continue Biden's policies while Trump may push for deregulation and increased production, potentially lowering oil prices. Renewables could set face setbacks under Trump, which increase carbon emissions and delayed peak fossil fuel demand, but natural gas might benefit. Very interesting paradigm shift in there. And so if you're an investor in oil and gas and you want money, vote for Biden or vote for Harris. That doesn't make sense because the, the way that the policies under the Biden administration, Harris-Biden administration, have destroyed the economy enough, you're going to have de-destruction in demand, which would lower volume as well, too, lower demand. Oil and gas investors have handsomely rewarded under the Biden administration with energy shares jumping 117 percent since Biden took over the Oval Office. This is leftover, actually, from the ESG movement, which was put in and the oil and gas executives listened and they did give back more to their investors. And this is very, very important. What has cost so much was the supply chain issues, the cost of pipe, the cost of drilling, the cost of supply, and everything else has been passed on to the consumers. So let's go to the next story here. Russia's crude oil shipments plunge to 11-month low. Russian seaboard crew exports dropped their lowest level since August of 2023 as Russia's refinery runs are rising and Moscow is working to comply with its OPEC plus production quota. 
tanker tracking monitored by Bloomberg showed on Tuesday. I got to hand it to them that they are, they're doing that. The cumulative overproduction in these six months was 1.1, 1 8, 1,184 million barrels per day for Iraq and 620,000 for Kazakhstan and 480,000 barrels per day for Russia. Russia's plan mostly for its overproduction. Russia's energy minister said last Wednesday, the country remains fully committed to the OPEC plus agreements. I think what you can see here from this is that they're most of the countries produce what they need to produce to cash the checks, but hats off for them for at least trying. Why don't they turn the wind turbines up? You got to subscribe to the Energy Bad Boys Substack. This is an absolute wonderful article when you sit back and take a look at what grid operators have to go through. And especially in Texas ERCOT, they have a, a very good couple of uh, points in here. Inevitably, wind and solar advocates will point to problems with every other resource, arguing that coal piles can freeze, right? Natural gas pipelines can malfunction and in interrupting supply, causing gas units to go down and nuclear units can unexpectedly trip offline. No, that's not why it, it works that way. Let's take a look at this slide, Miss Producer. If you could bring up ERCOT wind capacity factors during 2021 blackouts versus combined wind capacity accreditation. You'll notice that the line of accreditation is just a solid black line leaning all the way across the chart. But then you take a look at the wind capacity and its availability. It drives grid operators nuts having to plan for wind either are they turning up are they coming online is there no wind you cannot plan on one or the other and so when you sit back and take a look this is a very good articulated story and and why don't they turn up the wind uh, rather than hold wind and solar accountable for the inherent intermittent energy they produce Wind and solar advocates want you to believe they're not planning for thermal outages as the real culprit. They're trying to throw blame around on here and hats off to Isaac and the team over there. Great job, guys. It is a national concern on this. And they break it out into MISMO and the other regions and ERCOT. And then you take a look at peak demand. Great job. Hey, let's roll over here to Kamala's much touted $5 billion spent in electric school bus program yielded 60 buses in three years. This is some federal spending at its finest. The first a tranche of the clean school bus programs two years ago, Harrison, the EPA administrator, Michael Reagan unleashed nearly $1 billion of that money in federal rebates for 389 school districts across all 50 states to help deliver a total of two 2,463 electric school buses. Just 27 of those districts have proven to the EPA their buses were delivered and that their diesel fuel buses were replaced and been discarded. Collectively, those districts deployed a total of 60 battery electric a low emission or low emission propane fuel buses. Low emission propane, that's the first time I'd seen that roll in there, makes a lot of sense for rural school districts. Low emission propane pain works. EPA anticipates that transitioning to new technology school buses will take time. I'm all in on propane. Let's go transition to propane for the buses, but let's not spend $5 billion to the EPA and hand it out for 60 school buses. That is nuts. Let's go to the last story here. Kamala Harris is more radical on her energy policies than Joe Biden. So when you want to take a look, I want to give a shout out to Ronald Stein on this. Ronald is one cool cat. He's got a great book. I've had several great discussions with him. Let's go through some of the key points here. 
No one uses crude in its raw form. Big oil only exists for humanity's addition to the products and fuels made from oil. Renewables only exist to generate occasional electricity. They can make products or fuels. You cannot make products or fuels from wind or solar. It just makes electricity. So when you go through this, more than 6,000 products based on oil are being used for the health and well-being of the humanity, pharmaceuticals, fertilizer, and, and everything else. Kamala should know that there's no need to over-regulate the suppliers of fossil fuel when she has no replacements to meet the supply chain of demands of our materialistic world. She's trying to please her base there, if you would. So mandating EVs and electrical generation from wind turbines and solar panels is mandating more usage of crude oil. This is a very good validation of my theory that the more we go renewable, the more fossil fuels we will use. I've been saying this for years now, and it really is coming to pass. If you consider coal, and oil and natural gas, fossil fuels, which I really think that they're hydrocarbons rather than fossil fuels, you're going to use more of them the more you go renewable. It's just the way the numbers are playing out. So with that, please like, subscribe. If you are buying or selling hydrocarbons, as in jet fuel, as in oil, as in LNG, go to energynewsbeat.co forward slash trading desk reach out to us we'll connect you with the right place to buy and sell your hydrocarbons and uh, get those rolling there for you subscribe to the energy news beat sub stack and uh, look forward to hearing from you guys and have an absolutely wonderful day thanks